that second Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is it. This has to be it. Don't do the same thing. He's all over it. Yes. 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 This is the one. This is the one, guys, I'm telling you. Oh, he felt heavy. Oh. 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 Yo! What's up? Jay Siemens here, welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going ice fishing. Hopefully, hopefully we're gonna catch a big walleye, that is the goal, but before we go fishing, I have a very exciting giveaway to share with you guys. The last giveaway we did was a huge success. Shout out to the winners below who both won a $100 Princess Auto gift card, but we're upping it. My friends at Ion Augers said, let's give away an auger. Not just any auger, I'll, I'll show you guys. This is the Ion G2. This is the 10 inch version. This is the Cadillac of electric augers. This thing is 18 pounds, the lightest 10 inch auger on the market, an absolute beast. And we're giving it away. A week from today, we're gonna pick a winner and it is so easy, so easy to enter this contest. All you have to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and make sure your subscriptions are public. That is it. If you've been subscribed for the past five years, you're entered. If you subscribe anytime in the next week from this video dropping, you're entered. We will pick a winner and a brand new G2 is gonna be shipped to your door. 10 inch or an eight inch if you prefer, but uh, a pretty incredible giveaway. Thank you to my friends at ION for partnering on it, but we need to go walleye fishing, time's wasting, sun setting, and next time you see us, I'm gonna be probably very cozy in my ice shack. See you guys in a bit. Make sure everything's recording and happy. Oh, I'm overdressed already. The goal today is finesse walleye fishing. I think, you know, a lot of walleye fishing these days, like Winnipeg and everything, it's a lot of rattle baits, big aggressive lures, but I will tell you, some walleyes can be pretty, pretty finicky through the ice. So I'm gonna show you what I like to do when I find the walleyes are a little tougher to catch. Kind of just, you know, two very basic options. I've used them many times before. Option number one, this is gonna be our lighter rod. This is gonna be the rod that just sits there and does nothing. And this is your most basic fish catching rig. And that is a split shot and an octopus hook. All right, so first thing we're doing is tying on fluorocarbon leader. This is that clear chunk at the end. And when the fish are fussy, you can go pretty light, you know? Uh, eight pounds is what we're doing today. You could go six pounds. I mean, I know people go four. I, I really never go lighter than six. The only time I'd go forward maybe be like panfish or something. Probably a four foot chunk of line. And we were tying on this tiny octopus hook. I'll show you. I like the red hooks, give it a little bit of color. But uh, yeah, very basic. And now we're gonna add a couple split shots. They're just little crimp on weights. Wow, there's multiple fish under us. I'm gonna use two little split shots. And I, I'm gonna keep them probably a foot away from the hook so it still gives that live minnow a chance to swim around. All right, so I'm gonna hook him by the tail so he can swim around and then those weights are gonna keep him pegged. Flipping live minnow. That's gonna go down and this is on my lighter setup. So this is the dipstick, this is a 39 light. I've got three holes drilled today so I've got one for the live scope transducer in the middle and it can shoot both ways. The reason I picked the dipstick for a technique like this for my second line, you know I'm fishing by myself so I can fit both inside of the shack and uh, it's got a super, super soft tip hence the name dipstick. So it's really nice for detecting those bites and then also just giving you a, a second for the fish to engage with it. I'm gonna keep this bait a little further off bottom to make the fish work. It might keep the littler fish a little more away. The minnow, oh, we just ate it. Oh, we just lost him. Do you see that guys? You could see the minnow get nervous. And I know some people might think that that's ridiculous to say like, oh, your bait got nervous. It's a little more obvious when you're fishing with bigger baits. These minnows will actually start freaking out or maybe it's just in my head. Call me crazy, but that minnow got real nervous and then dunk, rod tip went down. All right, so we got the jig tied on. This is the jig I'm talking about. That is tungsten right there. Tungsten is a denser metal than lead. Lead's a lot easier to work with. Tungsten's a little more difficult to work with more expensive, but um, for using a small jig like this, you, you get the same size, but heavier. You know what I mean? The same uh, footprint. This fish is coming up fast. We're gonna get eaten right here. Watch this rod tip. The minnow's getting nervous. He's getting nervous. There we go. I think it's a little perch maybe. It's very small. But that soft rod, you can even see tiny fish. Eat your bait. I'm thinking like a 12 inch auger. 
there you have it. And if we're lucky, we've got to keep our minnow. There you have it. The reason I'm using a jig versus another split shot and a hook is this is a little easier to control. If I want to, you know, tease a fish with it, pound it in the mud, lift it above and get him chasing it. But that's something you can do with a jig with it. With a split shot and a minnow, it's okay. It's definitely good, but it's, it's not, it's not the same. It's not as instant. And people ask, why do you like longer rods? You're like, ah, I would prefer shorter rods. Well, a longer rod can get tight in the shack. I like a longer rod because you just have that much more forgiveness. When the fish shakes its head, the rod doesn't go straight. And when the rod stays bent, that's when the hook typically stays in the fish's mouth. So I like longer rods. It's nice for standing. Um, right now, given the filming situation, everything, I'm, it's a little bit tight. Oh, look at this. Look at him coming up. That might be the same one. He's coming up fast. Oh, yes. Yes, there we go. First decent bite of the night. This is on that little tungsten jig. Spitting up all my minnows. A little too small to eat, but hey, they're turning on. Good sign. I am keeping my drag a little bit on the looser side because I'm using very small hooks. I don't want to, you know, you can rip or bend hooks. When you're bass fishing, musky fishing with big hooks, you can have your drag cranked all the way in if you're doing using a flipping jig or something and just crank that fish in. But when you're dealing with lighter hooks, lighter line, you just, the first thing you want to do is back off your drag, use a softer rod because that's going to be that forgiveness you need when that fish is battling because we're potentially going to hook an eight pound walleye on this setup and it's a tiny little panfish jig. So I just did something kind of fun. I did a little shout out on Instagram and I said, ask me a question. It might show up in the next video. So. I got a schwack of questions here and in between fish, I'm going to answer some questions as best as I can. In your opinion, what is the best ice combo rod length line lure and bait for walleye during ice season? I think it's a jig and a minnow. I think uh, frostbite drench, the 39 medium light, eight pound braid, eight pound floral leader, uh, either a thousand or 2,500 size stratic. That question was from outdoor seasons. What pound test do you recommend for someone who only has one ice rod? I would say probably eight pound test. You could do panfish, you could do stock trout, you could do walleye, you could do whitefish. Why did Sam not take your last name? Samantha's my wife, her maiden name is Walleen. And uh, we talked about changing to Siemens and then we're like, you know what, Walleen's fine. I think if, if we have kids one day, it'll, the kids will probably be Siemens. But yeah, it just wasn't really a big deal. I, I didn't really care that much, so. Well, we're gonna just keep firing through these questions. All right, what is the easiest way to pick apart a lake without electronics for ice season? Um, I'm actually gonna insert a link below um, for a video I did about this, about picking apart a lake. I mean, if you don't have electronics, I mean, you, you sent me this question, so you probably have a phone. That means you have access to some sort of mapping. There's, you know, some free mapping you find online. You could pay for some mapping depending on where you're fishing. Uh, and then beyond that, there's visual clues that you can see on the shoreline. But anyways, I'll link the video below. Kind of like what I said, just a little more in depth. Okay, that was a bite. There we go. Oh, that's a big perch. Wow. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh, nice walleye. Real nice walleye. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Look at that gold. All right. There we go. Nice, perky gold, a little too big to eat. Things are turning on. Played with that fish for a while, and yeah, it hit the finesse split shot and octopus hook. I always find it amazing that even with big walleye, sometimes you have to finesse them so much, you think a big fish like that's just gonna come eat a live minnow like it's nothing. All right, back to the questions. <laughs> it's my favorite question yet from Winnot Loss. He said, did you have braces? Your smile makes me smile. Thank you, Austin. How smelly are Weeb Daddy's feet? That's from John Lehman. Yeah, they're pretty bad. Aaron doesn't really do laundry that often. Pretty rank. Zach Parkinson asks, getting into ice fishing more this year, what's a good bang for your buck flasher? If you have to get one unit that's kind of like good year round, um, I'd probably look at like a Helix, a portable Helix unit, like a Helix 5 or something. You can swap it onto your boat, use it for ice fishing. It's got mapping as well. If you're like really on a budget, I'd get like one of those deeper sonar balls or like $200, I don't know, or just get a, a used older flasher. Super Slam Outdoors asks, how many cameras do you use to film one video and what are each? what is each one and why? That's a great question. So in this scenario, 
super basic. I have a Sony a7 III with a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on a tripod and I have uh, a GoPro Hero 7 on that grip mount filming the screen. This is as basic as I will ever film. Um, you know, sometimes when I just want to get out for a half day, I mean, that's the beauty of YouTube is I can decide how each video is, right? Like there's times where I've filmed five or six days of, of a trip, like for example, my Yukon video, one of my favorite videos I've done, and it was drones and it was multiple cameras and time lapses and, and slow-mo and all sorts of stuff. And then there's times where I just come over with a tripod and camera and I just talk to the camera. And with YouTube, with the flexibility, you can do whatever you want, you know? You just ate it? No? Yes, there we go. There we go. This might be dinner. That was sweet. That one fish chased the other one away. Chomped it. Holy smokes. That is a big perch. There you go. Jumbo perch. Go to ice fishing snacks, says Derek Palmo. Uh, I don't know, like beef jerky or something's pretty great. I mean, if you can cook, oh, there's a big mark coming in. If you can cook fish on the ice, that's pretty tough to beat. I know that's not really a snack, but uh, top goal for this ice fishing season, asked Chase CD85 says, why aren't you as cool as Clayton Schick? I can't grow facial hair, so I that's probably it. If I could grow a beard, I'd be so much cooler. Ooh, we got two cruising on the left and one's got a lot of speed. I want that second one to bite. Whew, keeps getting bigger. Then it just morphed into two fish. Here we go, here we go, here we go, this is it. This has to be it. Don't do the same thing. He's all over it. He's all over it. Yes. 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 This is the one. This is the one, guys, I'm telling you. Oh, he felt heavy. Oh. 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 Oh, this is why you want that long, whippy rod to absorb those head shakes. We had so many fish come by and just stare and stare and stare. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's a giant. Oh, that's a giant. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys. That little tungsten jig. Alright guys, gave this quick, gave that fish a quick dip. Look at that pig. Look at that perky door, so huge fins. The fight was just phenomenal. Alright, it is going back. Look at that. Just a predator. Alright. Oh guys. Prime time. Like, what can I say? It's prime time. Why are you sticking out? It's dark outside. A micro little panfish size jig. I can't tell you like it's that combo has been deadly for me. We need to give a shout out to Canadian hunting and fishing. Darren Michnick. He asked, did you send my breading already? Uh, his was like the only batch of catch and cook that got lost in the mail. I'm not sure what the story is. He ordered a four pack. I think he might've ordered a shirt as well. Like one of the top supporters, Darren Michnick, give it up. You've got a package on the way. Hopefully by the time this video drops, what's catch and cook you might ask. Well, catch and cook is a uh, fish batter, breading, coating, that my buddy Josh McFadden and I created. I don't know, created, but uh, we sold out our first round a lot quicker than we expected. Like a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I, I wish we could have moved faster and had our second batch ready for Christmas, but unfortunately that, that didn't happen. But we just pulled the trigger on our next batch and we ordered 20 times as much as last time. So it's, it's happening. The kind of real Kuba Jet asks, do you ever fish or ice fish without making content? Man, I, I don't. Like there's a camera along every time. It's my job now and and I know I'm very blessed, very fortunate to, to be in the position to be able to do what I can do. Yeah, I just wanna make the most of this. If this all ends tomorrow and my YouTube channel or YouTube disappears or whatever, people stop watching my videos, I wanna say that I tried as hard as I could while I had the opportunity and I'm trying as hard as I can right now. Real Steven Brunt asks, please update on 39 hours. There's no update, man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want 39 hour season three as well. It's uh, it's not the time right now. 
See best test. What is your end goal? Hmm. To leave the world a better place than when I entered it. I don't know exactly what that means. Yeah, just try to make a positive impact. I try to make clean fishing content for you guys. Um, I, I'm always surprised by some of the younger viewers watching. So that's been something that I've made a priority is just to make something that kids can watch and their parents don't have to worry about might, what might be in there. Big question. Wow. What's more important, gear or location? Asks Adam J.R. Sherry. Obviously location, if you're on the fish. <laughs> They'll eat so many different lures. Like I think it's so funny how there's articles and videos and I'm, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. That's like, oh, you, you need to use this. You need to use that. I don't know. I'm. If you find the fish and you find active fish, it you can catch them with so many different things. Yes, there's definitely situations where they can be really fussy. Like here, I mean, I don't think you catch them with everything. From Josh Zap. What price point do you think you start to see diminishing returns in fishing rods? I think in that $150, $200 range is like you get amazing value. And then when you head up to that $400 to $600 range, like, yeah, it doesn't get that much better. But you do get that incredible warranty. So the thing is you buy a $500, $600 rod, and you're getting lifetime warranty for, you know, if you buy an NRX or something, you can close that rod in your door. You can chop it in the ceiling fan and they will replace it. I'm not sure how many times they replace it, but you know, you got to factor that into it. If you spend $200 on a rod and it's not lifetime warranty, well, instantly you replace it once and it's a $400 rod. So that's something to think about. Is the Yeti Go Box worth the money for a nice fishing tote? Been considering it myself from MFJ97. I love, I'm going to pull it out right now. I don't talk about the Yeti gear. I use that much. I know you probably see me wearing a Yeti hat and wrapping it, but this is the Go Box. And this is like such a sweet, hardcore, I mean, this is the perfect size for my fishing gear. So I can put, normally I put like a camera underneath there. I've got the tray, fit my GoPros, extra memory cards, wallet. I can fit my big camera in here, my, my big slow-mo cam, but you could fit, I could fit all my fishing tackle in here really. And then this pouch, I often put my laptop in here, all my cords, licenses, whatever else. Like, yeah, I love this box. It's waterproof, super durable. I sit on it. Yeah, it comes along everywhere. Sam, what, uh, why haven't you been in videos lately? What's, what's the deal? Two years ago. I fell out of our boat that was parked on the driveway. I slipped on the wheel well, landed on my back, and it's been an injury that's bugging me for a long time. And just right now, it has been like not, not, no bueno. Sorry, y'all. Um, next question, one last question. What's it like being married to uh, a YouTuber? It is a roller coaster. <laughs> when Jay goes through his ups and downs, we don't even say anything, we just go, if you had like a plain old bank job and you went to work every day and you earn the same amount of money every day, it would be different. That's fair. But you go through your highs and your lows and, but it's fun. It's new every day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being on the vlog. You're welcome. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Nick Holitzer says, how many 10 year olds do you think it would take to beat you up? 10 year olds, 10 year olds can be decent size already. Uh, I would say I could take four or five. I think if you got into like eight or nine, I, I don't think I could take 10 10 year olds. They would jump on me from all angles and just destroy me. Ooh.